This is kind of my life story, and uh, it is about my uh, life experiences that have made life lessons that have made me the person I am today. And this is about giving from your heart. About 6.30 that evening, after everyone else and I was sitting at my desk at, in my office, after everyone had left, I was sitting at my desk with a big smile on my face and decided it was time to go home. I was absolutely famished, as I had not eaten all day. I may have given up lots of vices in my life, but this is one vice that still had its hold on me. And like some of the other bad habits that I've enjoyed in my life, this one, while legal, could still get me in trouble with my wife and with my doctor. So you will understand why I can never tell them about that convenience store. Okay, just promise you won't rat me out. They sell my two favorite food groups, donuts and ice cream. <laughs> ah, just the sound of the word donuts conjures up such love and devotion. Donuts and I have had a special relationship, and it's been going on for years. <laughs> You see, I had a heart attack when I was 57 years old. My dad died of a massive heart attack at the young age of 46. You would think I would have known to take better care of myself, but no. I really got busted by my cardiologist, Dr. Lance School from the University of Texas Health Science Center. I was in for my annual checkup and found out that I had gained a few pounds since my last appointment, 15 to be exact. <laughs> But who was counting? Well, he was. So, uh, so there I was, half naked, sitting in the cold office when Dr. Cool came in, and I swear this is exactly what he said. Now, when I read this in Wharton, it didn't go over real good because there's a couple bad words here, tiny little bad words that everybody says every once in a while, but I don't know if they say that things in Wharton, whatever. And anyway, Richmond is much more progressive than Wharton's. <laughs> so if these words offend you, there's the door you can leave. <laughs> and I promise you, I promise you this is exactly what happened. So there I was, half naked, sitting in the cold office when Dr. Gould come in. I swear this is exactly what he said. Look at it, that fat belly hanging over your belt. I hear you've been eating those chicken shit candy ass donuts. <laughs> my mouth, my mouth hang open. Did he miss the warm bedside manner uh, class in medical school? <laughs> I looked at him and said, Do Dr. Gould, I, I need to ask you a question. I, you know, I'm pretty confused here. I, I said, is, is chicken shit candy ass a medical term? <laughs> he was not amused. If you don't stop eating those chicken shit candy ass donuts, you're going to have another heart attack. So I quit. I did. And for a long time. But then. <laughs> y'all don't believe me, do you? But then, the lure of those fresh, sweet, doughy, sticky buns call me back to the dark side. So back to the story at hand. I pull my black SUV into the store parking lot, burst through the double wide doors and was greeted by the round Pakistani manager just as he had greeted me for years. Hey, Mr. Donut Man, he shouted. Hey, Mr. Pakistani Man, I call back. You still hustling those people for lotto tickets? There were a dozen or so people standing in line to check out, and they all turned to me and, and looked at me. I said, don't buy any lotto tickets from him. I can't tell you how much money he has conned me out of. Everybody laughed, and some of the regulars shared their stories about Mr. Pakistani Man. As I was waiting in line, eager to get my sugar high going, I noticed a young boy standing by the display of a hot, hot food items, a crumpled $5 bill, and his clutched in his hand. He was pacing back and forth, and I could see the indecision in his face. He was trying to decide how he was going to spend his $5. And I could also see in his eyes that he wanted an after-school treat that cost more than he had had. Now me, I was feeling as high as a kite. No drugs, no alcohol, just high on life. 
I turned to the young man and said, buy anything you want, it's on me. He looked at me, he looked at Mr. Pakistani man and nodded and said, Mr. Donut Man means what he says, get whatever you want. We all had big smiles on our face. He came back to the counter with cheese covered nachos and big burrito. He was skinny as a stick. I had no idea where he's gonna put all that food. <laughs> I gave Mr. Pakistani man my credit card and found out that I'd just spent $10.72. After I paid, the young man looked at me and said just simply, thank you. I said, you're welcome, son. Now, I want you to do me a favor. Go out and do something nice for someone else. As he walked out the door, there was another gentleman standing at the uh, counter and getting ready to check out. He asked Mr. Pakistani man what had just happened. Mr. Donut man here just bought that boy his dinner. The guy waiting at the counter turned to me and said, you know, God is going to pay you back tenfold. I looked at him with a big smile on my face and I said, you know what? He already has. If you want to hear some more, you're just going to have to buy the book. <laughs> anyway, what this book is about and what my life is about and what my wife Sue's life is about is giving from our heart and doing the right thing. And you just don't know what a random act of kindness, when you go give somebody a kind word, how it will end up being. And and it's and it takes so little and it doesn't you can be a philanthropist you don't have to give money away to be a philanthropist you we have three things that we all of us can do we can have our time our talent and our treasure and any one of them qualifies you to do those things so remember a coward dies a thousand deaths a brave man only one thank you so much